Hello, and welcome back to Radiography Simplified. Michael here. We pick up where we left off in the last video by talking about the deterministic effects of radiation in more detail. To recap, we mentioned that deterministic effects are radiation effects, which have a threshold dose below which they cannot occur. Their severity increases with dose. Deterministic effects are usually seen at doses higher than those used in diagnostic radiography. We start the conversation by discussing one of the most widely studied deterministic effects of radiation, acute radiation syndrome. It is a form of radiation sickness which occurs in humans after an individual has received a large whole body exposure to ionizing radiation over a short period of time. To reiterate, acute radiation syndrome is not something that occurs in routine radiography. A high radiation dose exposure is required to cause acute radiation syndrome. This is why it is more likely to be encountered in industrial and environmental accidents or mishaps. Many industrial safety measures have been taken to make such high dose exposure accidents to be a less common effect. Recorded tragic incidents in history that led to acute radiation syndrome include the Hiroshima and Nagasaki atomic bomb incidents and the Chernobyl disaster of 1986. A lot of knowledge on acute radiation syndrome was obtained by studying the victims of these incidents. Now let's look into the features of acute radiation syndrome. Take note that ARS is not a symptom on its own, but is rather a collection of symptoms. Acute radiation syndrome can be classified into three sub-syndromes depending on the dose received by the victim. The hematopoietic system consists of the bone marrow and blood-forming cells. It is a very radiosensitive system. The hematopoietic subsyndrome of radiation sickness occurs when a person receives a 1 to 10 gray whole body dose of ionizing radiation. At this level, the platelets, red blood cells, and white blood cells are destroyed, causing anemia and compromised resistance to infection. Death typically occurs within 6 to 8 weeks, but could be shorter at higher doses. Through critical care and procedures, such as bone marrow transplants, exposed individuals could survive. GIT-related forms of the acute radiation syndrome occur between 6 to 10 gray of whole body exposure to ionizing radiation. Symptoms experienced include nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, fatigue, fever, bleeding, infection, electrolyte imbalance, and dehydration. Death typically occurs 3 to 10 days irrespective of the dose received. This is unlike with the hematopoietic syndrome where survival time is affected by dose. Also, Medical support can only extend survival time to a few days longer and will not usually lead to full recovery when the GIT is affected. Cerebrovascular syndrome occurs at exposure to 50 gray of radiation. Exposure of this magnitude damages the blood vessels, causing fluid to leak into the brain. The increased intracranial pressure leads to confusion, loss of vision, shock, respiratory distress, and many other symptoms. Death typically occurs within a few hours to three days. Take note that the subsyndromes are not mutually exclusive. There is an overlap between the subsyndromes, especially at higher doses. For example, at a dose of 7 gray, GIT syndromes would predominate, but some hematopoietic symptoms might occur in the background. And at 50 gray, GIT and hematopoietic symptoms could occur, but because the individual usually dies within hours from cerebrovascular symptoms, there might not be enough time for JIT and hematopoietic symptoms to manifest. Acute radiation syndrome, irrespective of the specific subsyndrome, occurs in four stages. First is the initial or prodromal stage where the first set of symptoms is seen. The higher the dose, the more severe the symptoms. The prodromal stage lasts for a few hours or days, and then we have the latent period. Here, no visible symptoms are seen. Depending on the dose and whether or not medical support has been received, it is during the latent period that the body actually tries to recover or braces up for proper illness. Depending on dose, the latent period can last for as long as one week. After the latent period, manifest illness occurs. Here, the symptoms come back, and then the individual either makes a recovery if the dose isn't too high and with medical support, or death occurs. Now let's explore other deterministic effects of radiation that do not occur to the magnitude of acute radiation syndrome. These are local effects from local exposures unlike the acute syndrome which occurs after whole body exposure. 
Excessive exposure to the skin can cause reddening of the skin loosely referred to as radiodermatitis, desquamation, which is the shedding of the outer layer of the skin, and epilation, which is the loss of hair. Excessive exposure to the eyes also causes cataracts. The reproductive system is quite radiosensitive. In males, gonadal doses as low as 0.1 gray can cause a reduction in the amount of sperm cells and cause mutation of the sperm cells that are available, which could lead to genetic mutations in future generations. In females, a gonadal dose of 0.1 gray can suppress menstruation. In both males and females, gonadal dose of 2 gray can cause temporary sterility, while doses of 5 gray would cause permanent sterility. A whole body dose of 0.25 gray would cause a reduction in the number of circulating blood cells, a condition known as hematologic depression. This is different and not as severe as the hematopoietic subsyndrome of acute radiation syndrome. We close off this video by introducing you to a term called lethal dose. This is the dose of radiation that is likely to cause death. It is commonly expressed as the term LD5030, which is the whole body dose of radiation that would be lethal to 50% of the population in 30 days. In humans, this is between 3 to 4 gray. However, history says that individuals have survived as high as 8.5 gray with medical support. That concludes our discussion on deterministic effects of radiation. We wrap up the radiation biology conversation in our next video. Toodles.